we're in our second week of the series that we've been calling Love Life Lessons. And tonight we're going to be talking about dating. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. I've been really looking forward uh, to this night, talking about it. I think it's going to be really fun. And, you know, all of you guys in, in here are in different places. Some of you, when I bring up the word dating, you're like, ew, boys have cooties. Or ew, girls have cooties. Or maybe you're like, oh, I want to date, but I'm not with someone right now. Or maybe right now you are currently dating. You know, we're all in different places. And I really do believe that I think this message will be helpful and encouraging for you no matter where you're at. I think if you still think boys or girls have cooties, I think this will be a good message for you for in the future to remember uh, how you should date and who you should look for when dating. I think for those of you that aren't dating yet, but you want to in the future, this is a great message for you to know what, how to do what you want to do in the near future. And for those of you that are dating, this is going to be an especially uh, relevant message. So I'm really excited about it. I'm going to have to uh, start off the message kind of deconstructing a few things about dating, some uh, really terrible things that I believe our culture and just kind of the culture of dating in America and things people say, you know, what dating should look like and how you should do it. Like, I guess one way to put it would be like, have anybody here ever watched like the extreme makeover home edition shows? Like, or with Chip and Joanna. What, what's that show called again? Fixer Upper. Fix upper. I love that show. Um, but what's the first day on those type of shows, right? Does anybody know what the first day is? Demo day. Yes. I've wanted to do just a demo day of somebody's house for the longest time. Just taking a sledgehammer and just boom, just tearing across like a whole house. But we're kind of going to be doing that because their their whole reason why they do demo day, right, is because the house is not very nice. It's kind of messed up and they got to tear some things down before they build the good things up. And I think there are a lot of things that we hear about dating that are honestly really hurtful and not helpful. And so what I want to start off doing is I want to kind of do a demo day on three, I think, wrong views of dating that are very common in our culture and in our world. And then I want to give you guys two uh, love life lessons on what the Bible says about uh, dating. So let's just get started with the wrong views of dating and do a little demo day together. Um, so here's the first uh, wrong view of dating is that dating will make me happy. Man, if I just get myself a boo, if I just get myself a boyfriend, if I just get myself a girlfriend, I will be so much happier than I am now. Not true. <laughs> Definitely not true. Because here's the reality of it is if you actually get into a relationship, relationships are great and beautiful and they're fantastic. But relationships also are hard. <laughs> relationships aren't easy. Relationships have conflict because you know what you might kind of get a quiver in your liver when you first see the person like oh my gosh this person is so cute they're so awesome I want to be with them I want to text them all day every day I want to FaceTime them every night before I go to sleep I love them they're awesome we're going to Snapchat all day and you know you have all these warm and fuzzies about them and then as you get to know them you realize that they're a real person with real issues and they don't always make your life that happy in fact sometimes they make your life very unhappy and oftentimes people, they go into dating relationships thinking, oh, if I'm just going to, if I can just be with someone and have somebody love me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to just make all my problems go away and I'm going to be happy. And that's not true. Oftentimes relationships make life harder. They make life harder. Just ask your parents that if they've been married for any amount of time. They will tell you. They, they might love being married, but marriage is hard. Relationships are not easy. Now, can, they, can relationships and dating relationships bring happiness? Absolutely. They can bring a lot of happiness in life and be really awesome. But if you look for a dating relationship to be your main source of happiness and to be that thing that kind of takes away depression and hopelessness and unhappiness in your life, you're just going to be disappointed. Because only Jesus can do that. Only a relationship with Jesus can make you infinitely happy no matter what you go through. Knowing that there is a God that loved you so much that he would die on the cross for your sins, rise again three days later so that you could have a relationship with him now and in heaven forever. That is what can make you happy. Not some dumb guy. Sorry, it's just, it's, no. He, he can't do that. Only Jesus can do that. 
Second thing I want to demo real quick is, is that you can change the person you date. No, you can't, you can't change the person you date. So many people, they go into relationships and they're like, oh, well, uh, he has potential. And, you know, I, 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 you know he's kind of, you know, partying and doing these things. And, you know, he doesn't really respect my boundaries that much. But, you know, I, I, I see good in him in the future. And you know what? He's not, he's not, per, he's not good now, but you know, I, I could see him in the future getting better. And so you head into this relationship knowing that it's not good for you, thinking that within a few months, if you date them, they'll suddenly become like this amazing follower of Jesus, Christian, that doesn't want to do all these bad things. And that's not true. That's not true because we can't change people. You can't change people. Only Jesus can change people. We can't. And so many people, they get into relationships and they're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, he's really cute. She's really cute. I want to be with them. I know that there's these things about them that aren't good, but I'm really attracted to them and I have fun with them. So I'm going to date them anyways. They get into a relationship thinking they could change them. And years down the line, they're really, really disappointed and having a really rough time in life because they're with somebody they shouldn't be because they think they could change them and they can't. Third thing uh, about dating, okay, casual dating, uh, not a good idea, okay? If, and if you don't know what casual dating is, casual dating is the idea is that I just date for fun and enjoyment. I, I date people and I have no intentions to figure out whether or not I want to marry them in the future. I'm just going to date them because I find them attractive, we have fun together, and I want to have fun. Okay, the whole purpose of dating is to figure out whether or not you want to marry that person in the future. And if your only purpose in dating somebody is so that uh, you could have fun with them and you enjoy being with them, and the whole purpose is fun, well, you know what's going to happen if the whole purpose of your relationship with them is fun? Is you're gonna, it's going to lead to foolish things. Because if you're not thinking seriously of, oh, uh, is this person somebody... I may or may not marry. Is this uh, somebody I want to honor and uh, not do the things I know God doesn't want me to do with them before marriage? If you're not thinking about those things and you're only thinking about, well, I just want to date for fun, it's going to lead to foolish things because you're going to think, oh, well, well, this is fun. Oh, and this is fun. Oh, and this is fun. Oh, and now I want to do this because this is fun. And the whole purpose of casual dating is personal enjoyment. And that's not the purpose of dating. The purpose of dating is to Genuinely think about if you would marry somebody and they would be, be somebody that you would want to follow Jesus with the rest of your life. And if you don't see this person as somebody that you could follow Jesus with the rest of your life, then forget it. You can still be nice to them. You can still be friends with them. But don't date them. Amen. So those are the uh, enough, enough demolition for now. Uh, that was fun. But okay, so number one, dating will make you happy. Uh, probably not. Two, you can change the person you date. You can't do that. Casual dating. Uh, I said enough on that. That's ridiculous. Okay. So, okay. Let's get into what dating should actually look like. Okay. Let's look at the first, first point. Okay. First point is date a Christian. And this is really simple. Date a Christian. Let's read 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says this about relationships between guys and girls. It says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Okay, so this verse is very clear, right? If you are a Christian, don't date or marry a non-Christian. It says, don't team up with an unbeliever because if you date a non-Christian, this is what's going to happen, is if you're a Christian, you have a, a way of how you want to live and following Jesus, and they have a way of how they want to live that doesn't include following Jesus. And if you are going to team up together, and right, a team often goes together in the same direction, they're going to take you that way, or you're going to take them this way. And from my experience, what I've seen is oftentimes Christians that date non-Christians end up going that way. And that doesn't happen all the time, but a lot of Christians, they kind of lose their faith because they date someone that doesn't have faith. It's kind of like a, a three-legged race. Think of it this way. If you've ever done a three-legged 
race before, right? When you're doing a three-legged race, you're teamed up with somebody, you're linked up to somebody, very much like a relationship. You're linked up, you're close to them, right? Now, if you run a three-legged race and one person wants to run this way and the other person wants to run that way, what's going to happen? It's going to be a train wreck. It's going to be terrible. And if you're a Christian and you date a non-Christian, that's what your relationship will look like. That's exactly, in fact, there was actually a video. Let's put it up on the screen, the next slide. There was a video I saw that I thought illustrated this uh, really well. Let's, there we go. There we go. Three-legged race. It's a three-legged race. Oh, she's dragging her. She said, you're coming. Awesome. Uh, (laughs) So that's what a Christian dating a non-Christian looks like. Come to church. Dragging them. You're going to have to drag them to church. You're going to have to tell them to do all these things that they don't want to do because it's not them. Listen, in this church, we want you to be friends with unbelievers. We want you to talk to people that aren't Christians. We want you to invite them to church, but date them? No. No. Because when you date somebody or when you marry somebody, it's a, it's a closer relationship that has a lot of influence on you. And if you date or marry somebody that isn't a Christian, it's going to cause your faith to go in places that it shouldn't go. And so the number one question you need to ask, if you're considering dating somebody that you like, the first question that you need to ask is, does this person have a heart for Jesus? Not, do I find this person hot but does this person have a heart for Jesus, okay? Seriously, okay? Let's read the verse on the screen, 1 Samuel 16, 7. It says this. It says, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When you're dating somebody, where's the first place you look? Is it the outside or the inside? Ouch, that's true. Many times when people are looking for somebody to date, it's like, oh, I find them very attractive. Let's have a relationship. That is not the... Listen, if you find somebody attractive and, you know, you want to date them, that's great. But they also better be a Christian. Because, see, we as people, we often, we look at the outside, we look at the things that are, you know, very superficial. Okay, uh, are they attractive? Uh, Do I have fun with them? Do they like the same music I do? Do they have the same favorite movies that I do? Do they have the same hobbies that I do? Are they a morning person or a night person like me? You know, all these different things, all these outer things. And none of these are bad things, by the way. It's not a sin if you find somebody attractive. It's not a sin if, you know, you have the same top three movie list as somebody else and you like that. That's a good thing. But that's not the most important thing when thinking about who you, should, who you should date. It's not looking on what's the outside, but it's looking at the inside. Who is this person? Do they really love Jesus? Do they just go to church, go through the motions, and they're just kind of faking it? Or are they really passionate, loving followers of Jesus? Not asking just, is this person somebody that goes to church? But do they really love Jesus? Like, do they really have an awesome relationship with Jesus? Because some people, I've also seen this, like, well, he's a Christian. He'll come to church with me. And it's like, yeah, that's about it. It's like, that, that, that dude, man, he'll go to church on Easter and Christmas twice a year, but that's it. Sorry, that's pro- he's probably not a Christian. Okay? I'm talking, does this person really love Jesus? That's what you need to look at first when trying to figure out Who you should date. So we're talking about, okay, who you should date. They should be a Christian. Don't just look at the outside appearance. Look at their heart. Not if they're hot, but what their heart is at, right? But you might be asking, okay, that's great. I know who I should be dating, but when should I date? Like, when would be the right time for me to do that? What age would be good for me to do that? And a lot of people have different opinions on this, right? I mean, some people, it's it's so ridiculous when I see like six-year-olds are like, I got a girlfriend. It's like, no, you don't. You don't even know how to tie your shoe, fool. You don't even know how to tie your shoe. Are you kidding me? You're like a dog chasing a car. You wouldn't even know to do even if you caught it, man. 
Are you kidding me? And, uh, you know, so people ask, when, when should we date? When, when's the right timing? Uh, is it in sixth grade? Is it in twelfth grade? Is it in 10th grade? When uh, should, and by the way, what I'm about to say right now is my personal opinion. So don't take it as God's word. There's not a verse that says, thou shalt date at the age of 15 and a half on the sixth month of the twelfth day. That is when you shall be eligible to date, right? This is more of a, uh, a cultural thing, a wisdom thing, right? I mean, in Jesus' day, people got married when they were 13. But also, people when they were 13 had a job and could provide for a family and build a house. Don't really do that these days anymore when you're 13, okay? So, when it comes to when should I date, here's my personal opinion, okay? If you are in 6th grade to ninth grade, my personal opinion is, is you probably shouldn't be dating because you're very, very, very far away from actually being able to do anything that has to do with marriage and seriously thinking about that. And really, you probably need to be just taking time. You know, it's hard to get to know somebody when you don't really even know yourself that well. And when you, the reality is, is when you're in middle school and when you're in ninth grade, you're just figuring out who you are. You're figuring out your strengths, your weaknesses. And so you need to be doing that. And first most, you need to be growing closer to following Jesus before trying to get closer to somebody and and date them. Now, I think from 10th to 12th grade, I'm not saying, hey, green light, date whoever you want and do it. This is, I'm giving you, if you are from 10th grade to 12th grade, I want to give you a yellow light. And I also want to say that it's dependent on each person and situation. Some people that are in 12th grade have no business dating at all, and you need to maybe take some time before you even think about it. And some of you that are in 11th grade might be ready to date. It really just depends on the person, and you need to be honest with yourself, and you need to have a conversation with your parents about it on what they think. And you could always talk to me about it. You could talk to a leader about it. We're here for you, and we love you, and we want what's best for you, and we want to make sure that you're doing the right thing. And the reason I say yellow light and not a green light for in high school is because high school relationships uh, can be great, but the reality is is the majority of them are not so great. And I've seen this. Um, One of the statistics that I thought was interesting as I was studying all this is that only 2% of new marriages actually come from high school relationships. 2%. It's a pretty small amount. And so that's why I'm kind of saying just be hesitant before jumping into a relationship as high school in high school because the reality is is you may or you don't know whether you may or may not marry them and you very well could one of uh, actually the people that kind of helped Jamie and I re-meet together is somebody I've known since I was little they're high school sweethearts they've been together for like 25 years and they're like the most amazing couple ever so i mean there are definitely people that like you know you're in high school and it's like hey you guys both love Jesus you're mature You're trying to figure out if maybe you'd marry each other in the future. And that's totally cool. And you could do that. But the reality is, is a lot of the times what happens in high school relationships is you're dating because you like the person, you find them attractive, you think it'll make you happy. And so you date to have fun. And then before you know it, you find yourself crossing boundaries that you know you shouldn't be crossing and people get hurt. And so that's why I say I give you a yellow light. But not a red light because I do believe that there are the exceptions and there are people that are ready to date. And I would encourage that and say, uh, encourage your, one another in your relationship with Jesus and just, just be careful. Be careful. And when you're trying to figure out who you're dating, remember that it's not so much about the outside stuff. It's about the inside stuff. Are they the right person? Not, is this person hot, but do they have the right heart? Okay. Point number two, uh, second point, this is the last point we're doing today, is you need to date with biblical boundaries. Date with biblical boundaries, okay? So if you are uh, in a relationship or you, in the future, when you are in a relationship, you need to be dating with biblical boundaries. Now, a boundary, right, it's kind of like the uh, line in the sand that you draw, and you're kind of like, okay, this is where we're drawing the line, Uh, and we're not going to cross that line because if we cross that line, it's not going to be good. I think one example of uh, a boundary, anybody here ever seen the, uh, the, like, the dog shot collars? I always thought those were so funny. I've always, I always wanted to put one, like, on my brother. So, like, when he woke up and, I don't know, like, shock him. I always wanted to do that. But right when you put on the shot collars, right, it's like if the dog 
goes to a place it shouldn't go. It shocks him, and then he knows not to go there anymore. And when dating, there are biblical boundaries, there are boundaries that God says, this line is not supposed to be crossed until marriage. And if you cross this line, you will be shocked. If you cross this line, you will hurt yourself and you will hurt the person that you're dating. And it's not to restrict you, it's because he loves you. So let's just look at, there were a lot of passages here, but let's just read 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. It says this, He's talking, uh, this is the Apostle Paul, and it's interesting. He's writing to Timothy, who was a young man, probably not much older than many of you in this room. And he's talking to Timothy about how he should treat people in the church, depending on their gender. And he says this. He says, treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. And so he's saying, Timothy, when you're hanging around uh, other guys, they're like your brothers. But when you're hanging around younger women uh, that are your age, and by the way, Timothy was single, he says, treat them as sisters in Christ with absolute purity. You see, we live in a time and we live in a culture where our society has made up this magical middle ground that doesn't exist called uh, dating, where they say, okay, uh, here, uh, your friends, and obviously you don't do anything there. And then uh, here you're married, and that's where you could do everything. But in dating, you can kind of practice things and maybe kind of do some physical things and, you know, just try it out to see if it works between you and that person. And that stage is non-existent in the Bible. The Bible says they're either your brother and sister in Christ or you're married to them. There isn't this middle ground of, oh, this person. No, it's they're either your brother or your sister or you're married to them. And so if you're not married to somebody, that means you treat them as a brother if you're a girl. And if you're a guy and you're not married to them, you treat them as you would a sister. And so this has some pretty big implications and ramifications when it comes to what kind of boundaries we should set in place when we are dating. And so I want us to look at just three areas of our life where there should be boundaries in our dating relationships. Number one is in spiritual boundaries, okay? So if this person is your brother or your sister, that means you're not married to them. That means when you're dating, you can encourage one another in your faith. I would encourage you uh, to go to church together. You could talk about your faith together. You could even pray together. But I would not say that, guys, you're like, okay, uh, we're doing devotionals together every day, and, you know, we're going to, and you're like leading her and all these things. No, that's for, that's for that type of deep uh, spiritual uh, connection is saved uh, for marriage. And you could talk about your faith. I, if you go to church, that's fantastic. Go to church together. But this, sometimes what I've seen, it's more of a Christian community thing, right? It's not like you're going to see people that don't go to church trying to do devotionals together every day. But in the Christian community, it's like, okay, let's, uh, you know, I'm going to lead you in this and we're going to do these devotionals every day. It's like, well, no, hold on a second. You're building these kind of tight levels of intimacy that aren't really meant to be uh, bridged until marriage. That's your brother or your sister. Uh, secondly, uh, emotional boundaries, okay? Emotional boundaries, meaning if this person is your brother and sister in Christ and you're not married to them, that means you probably shouldn't tell them I love you off, off after the first date, right? And it's like, you know, you might feel it, but it's like going to that place of like, I want to marry you one day, and uh, I want our second and third kid's name to be Matthew and Zacchaeus, and let's, you know, live in the beach house together and all this stuff. It's like, holy moly, cool it down, buddy. We just met and went on our first date. Like, <laughs> let's have some patience here with where we go emotionally, okay? And sure, you could tell your brother and sister I love you, but when you tell your brother and sister I love you, and you say somebody you're married with I love you, it kind of means two different things. I don't know if you noticed that. And so you can have uh, affection for them. You could uh, tell them I love you at the proper time when that's actually time has developed and you've grown closer in relationship. But just be careful um, emo um, emotionally. Don't make promises too quickly. Don't be like, hey, I want to buy you a, 
I, I've even seen this happen before. I want to buy you a promise ring and promise that we'll get engaged one day. And it's like you've been dating for six months and it's like, holy moly. Oh my goodness, you're like saying that you're going to get married and like you're 18 and you're not going to finish college for a few years. Like cool it on the promises because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So what I'm just saying here is just be careful because it's easy and I don't blame you guys because I've totally been there myself, okay? It's, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the romance and you just kind of jump to these places too quickly and you need to be able to have the kind of emotional boundaries where you uh, don't go to places too quickly. Because if you go to certain places too quickly, it could uh, get you really close to a person. And then when you're not with them, it really, really hurts for you and the other person. And then third and finally, physical boundaries. Okay, I think this is going to be pretty easy for me to say. If you wouldn't do it to your brother and sister, don't do it to them. <laughs> you probably wouldn't stick your tongue down your brother's throat or your sister's throat. I'm just going to say that right now, okay? You probably wouldn't do that. Just saying. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys for a second, okay? I heard a pastor once tell me um, uh, years ago, and he was talking about dating advice, and he said, he was talking about this. He was talking about physical boundaries. And he was saying, what I say to you, because right, the question is, is, well, how far is too far, right? How far is too far before marriage? When does it become sin? What's the farthest we could go without sinning? Okay. And here's the reality, right? If they're your brother and your sister, what I would say is making out is probably not a good idea. And all the stuff after that, I'm not going to go into it in detail, is definitely out of the question. Okay? But making out is just not a good idea. And I'll tell you what. I heard the pastor. He said that. I remember I, I laughed. I was like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. You know, you're not doing anything bad. It's just making out. It's not that big of a deal. But you know what? If you start making out and do that stuff, you're going to want to do other stuff. You might think, oh, pff, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we, can, we can just do that and it'll be fine. You don't know. You, you just don't know what you're talking about. I'll just be honest with you. Because if you do that, you are going to want to do other stuff. Because you're going to be attracted to the person and you're going to get into it. And then before you know it, you're headed down a road. You know you shouldn't be going and it's just not good. And I can tell you from uh, personal experience that I, I, I made mistakes when I first heard that pastor. I was like, oh, it's not that, that big of a deal. And, uh, you know, Jamie and I, I mean, we'll be honest that, you know, we, we thought it was okay to make out before marriage for a little bit, and it wasn't good for us. Like, it was bad. We really regret it. And we thought we could get away with it, and really, it just, it wasn't good for us. And it's one of our biggest regrets as a couple when we were dating. I mean, am I right? And, you know, we love you guys, and we want what's best for you. And if you guys could not make the same mistakes that your pastor made, then that'd be pretty awesome. And so that's what I want for you guys. I want you guys to be uh, protected from mistakes that I've made, mistakes from just every... And, you know, it's hard because we live in a world where, you know, everybody just does whatever they want with whoever they want, whenever they want. But the reality is, is that just that... that oh, my gosh, you have no idea how much uh, damage it does when you cross physical boundaries before marriage. It... It brings, because here's the, you can't guarantee if you're going to marry that person. You might be seriously considering it. You might even have good intentions, but you don't know for sure if you're going to marry that person. And how's that going to be when, you know, you break up and then you're with somebody else and then eventually you find the person you marry and you have to tell them that you've done all these different things with different people. Now, is everything forgivable and can you, God's love can cover over all that and it's all okay? Absolutely. But just because God's love can cover something and his forgiveness can get you past it doesn't mean you should take advantage of it. So those are the three boundaries that shouldn't be crossed. The spiritual, the emotional, the physical. And it's all because before marriage, it's your brother or your sister. And so what I want to ask you out of the three boundaries that we just looked at, which one is the hardest for you to keep? Or maybe which one of these have you crossed even? You know, we've all, or none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect.
okay? The reality is, is that, you know, we, we all fall short in many ways and that God's love can cover over anything. The reason why Jesus went to the cross is because we have been sinners and all of us, we've crossed these boundaries in relationships and we've crossed so many other boundaries and sinned in so many other ways. And the good news of the gospel is that we have a God that knows all the stupid stuff that we've ever done and he still loves us and he still forgives us and he's still faithful. And so I just want to close here and I want to, I want to read this verse. It's 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. And it says this. He says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's really short, so I want to read it again. He says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Notice that this verse, it talks about God's love for us before it talks about loving other people. That's not a mistake. You see, you can't love other people in a romantic relationship. You can't love anybody until you first receive God's love for you. No romantic relationship will work unless God's love is at the center of it. None will work. Because in relationships, you will have conflict, you will have arguments, you will have disagreements, you will have pet peeves, you will have all kinds of issues. And unless you have God's unconditional forgiving love in your life and they have it in their life, it won't work. It won't work. And the cross is where God's love is most clearly and powerfully shown. That God loved us so much that he would die for people that didn't even fully acknowledge him. That's how much God loves you. God loves you so much that even before you ever thought of him, he wanted to die for you. Isn't that amazing? That even on your worst days, God still loves you. Even on your worst days, God still loves you. And so... We can find happiness and we can find love in relationships and in dating relationships. But really, who your first love is supposed to be is the one that loved you before you were even born. And the one that died for you before you were even born. And the person that rose again before you were even born. And the person that wanted to forgive you before you were even born. He should be and can be your first love. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that you love us unconditionally. Um, that you desire to have a relationship with us. And God, that you know um, all of our mistakes that we've made, the boundary we, boundaries we've crossed in the past, the boundaries we're going to cross in the future. Lord, you know all of that and you still want to have us. So Lord, we thank you for that. God, and I pray that if there's anybody in here that feels guilt or shame about any sin, any things that they've done, Lord, I ask that you would just reveal yourself to them and show uh, your amazing love to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.